Welcome to a very unique edition of the ODPH podcast, better known as the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. That's putting it mildly. I am your host, Ken M. Joining me in studio, the one and only Padawan J. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, you're probably asking, wait, where is the music? Uh huh. Well, funny little story about how the behind the scenes go here at the ODP. So studio. we're, we're going to peel back the curtain. Uh, I know the popular saying from Wizard of Oz is pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Well, in this case, pay attention to the man behind the curtain. Uh, just to give a little behind the scenes inside baseball on you here. Uh, we have been sitting here for what, two hours now? Or two hours or so? Give take. Uh, we're, we're getting prepped on for the show, typing up the info for the episode on uh, a Podbean, our hosting site. Uh, you know, looking up all the info we needed to uh, preview for this week's show. We were going to have a stellar show for you. Uh, and then we noticed uh, a beeping going on. Now, initially, we had thought that it was a car because there was a car next door to where we are currently located. The car alarm was going off. Mm-hmm. So, so I heard it a second time. I'm like, geez, is there a car alarm going off a second time? Yeah, like what's going on? Uh, and then I realized it is not the car alarm. It is the external hard drive that we use for the show. Yeah, so all the music that we have on there and the promos... Unfortunately, we're still trying to get worked out and transferred over. But due to time constri- you know, constraints, because let's face it, contrary to popular belief, this is not the only thing we do. Uh huh. We have only a limited window that we're allowed to do some recording in. So, that being said, it was either skip this week or plow through and give you some kind of content. Yeah, because we, we, the, the hard drive started beeping. Uh, we did some research, and we were trying to trouble fix it ourselves to no avail. Uh, we ran down to the f- wonderful folks over at Best Buy. Uh, yes, shout out to them. Shout out to Best Buy. Uh, talked to the geek squad over there, uh, explaining what's happening. Uh, the guy had a hunch what was going on, but he wanted to run some tests on it himself uh, to see if it was what he suspected. Uh, and it did turn out to be true. It is a total uh, hard drive, external hard drive failure. So, yeah, we got nothing. We got nothing for this week, but fear not. We will be coming back next week with our music, with our promos, and we will go from there with it because it's just a matter of time for transferring, and that's the only thing. Time is not our friend for this, so we're definitely going to have to make do with what we have because it was either take the week off or give you something. We elected to give you something, folks, so we hope you appreciate that. So you can tell us, great, or, hey, you guys should have taken the week off. Whatever you want to say. Swing on over to OchoDoraPaleHour.com. Join the conversation on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Podchaser, and let us know what you thought. And always remember use the hashtag ODPH because we still want to talk about arguably the biggest event going on in 2021 thus far. So far. And I know it's still early, but it's so big. We just could not skip the week on that. And that is WandaVision is dropping this Friday on Disney+. Plus. Let's go. Mm-hmm. The long-awaited MCU show is finally hitting the streaming service, picking up the story of the Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen, and Paul Bettany, played by The Vision, in the fallout of the Avengers Endgame movie. Mm -hmm. Now, we have seen the trailer multiple times. We are not exactly sure what is going on, but... We have some ideas of what to expect from this. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, coming off the heels of Avengers Endgame, and by this time, I shouldn't have to say spoilers, so you know what's going on. You don't know at this point it's your own goddamn fault. Exactly. The Vision is no longer alive. He did. The Scarlet Witch has been going through a very grieving process. and We presume. We presume because after the fallout of Endgame, we have not really seen or heard what she has been up to. Well, so the only times we saw her in Endgame was when she came back to life and was in the battle and was real pissed at Thanos. Mm-hmm. And then it was the funeral scene for Tony, and that's been it. Right. So this is going to be the kickoff of the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And where we're going with this, we're not sure. Nope. But we do know from the trailers that it appears that the Vision has come back to life in some form. Eh, somehow. That we presume. And obviously, if you know the power set of one Scarlet Witch, this is not out of the realm of thought. No. By any stretch. No. So we do know that they are together, they are married, and they're living in pretty much the Leave it to Beaver, Ozzy and Harriet sitcom I'm, I'm, I'm world. Going, I'm going with it's an alternate universe. Or, or like a pocket universe. Well, we're, that's the whole thing, because it appears they're living in an old 60s sitcom, mm-hmm. and they're trying to live in a very normal life, away from the superhero world. Yeah. They're not having that luxury, though, because it seems that they're getting outside forces lurking in. Yeah. One of which is their nosy neighbor, uh, Agnes, who's played by Catherine Hamm, mm-hmm. and 
she is playing it up right now that she seems to know what's going on and is kind of trying to manipulate, trying to get her nose in all their business right. going on. Right. Because as it appears the Scarlet Witch is happy and married and appears to be pregnant too. Yeah. Things are not always what it seems. No. We do know that there's some outside forces lurking in. and Something's what, going on. Something is going on, and we do see that we have S.W.O.R.D. paying full attention. Uh-huh. Now, this is the space branch of S.H.I.E.L.D. that we saw a little yep. introduction in, obviously, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. finale, even though they didn't want to say it. And we do know at the end of Captain Marvel... Nick Fury seemed to be a part of S.W.O.R.D. and what was going on there. Well, he's in space dealing with the Skrulls, so, well, you know what it is. got to put one and one together. So where are we expecting to go with this series? Now, we do know there's going to be nine episodes. Yep. The premiere is allegedly going to be two episodes. So it is. I don't, I, okay, so that has been confirmed. Yep. Are they going to be airing back-to-back, or are they going to space it out and say the first episode obviously kicks off this Friday, next week will be the end of the first episode? January 15th, episodes one and two drop at the same oh, okay. time. Okay, so they are coming back-to-back. Excellent, because I know there was a little confliction about what was going on, because as we're now hearing the slate of the MCU shows kicking off, there's this heightened expectation of what to expect here. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, the trailers have introduced that we're going to see an aged Monica Rambeau, yep. played by Tiana Paris. Yep. So we know her character is going to be connected. We have heard about a few others that are rumored to be involved. Yep. And where we're going to go, it depends on what story you want to believe from the comics. Now, there has been a lot that it seems like this is going to be influenced from. Okay. The one that is jumping out to me is the Tom King vision story sure which if you haven't read it's a fantastic read i will say and it's basically how the vision got away and tried living a normal life now this is something where tom king really excels at if you've read his batman that he likes to take the hero out of the hero's universe and try seeing the normal life Mm -hmm. now the vision during this whole point really goes left to center and has a whole family of androids involved and just what goes on with that is truly a fantastic read. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it goes to show that you can take the superhero out of the he- uh, the universe, but you can't take the universe out of the hero. Right. A lot of elements going on here, and I see that that is going to be reflecting on the show. Because the more that you have the vision trying to be normal, and obviously coming back from the dead, and he doesn't know why he's dead, Right. you really have to figure out, okay, what is his way now well and you got to figure given what we've seen from the loki trailer that there are repercussions and and consequences much like we've seen in the flash for somebody who is dead all all of a sudden is at a point where they're not supposed to be dead or where where the where sorry let me rephrase that there are consequences for a person who's supposed to be dead and there's some place they're not supposed to be you know given loki and and what we've seen from that trailer Mm mm-hmm because with Loki coming on, that'll be the third Marvel Cinematic show that is debuting on Disney Plus this year. Yep. Time is going to be the underlying factor of yeah. the next phase. Yeah, because I, I get the feeling that this is some sort of pocket dimension or pocket universe or something. It's like something's going on. She's brought Vision back from the dead because, let's face it, that's in her wheelhouse that she can do something like that. Right. You know, and that it's external forces or, you know, there's stuff going on that the universe is like it's it's been it's going against the laws of nature and the universe is pushing back against it a little bit. Well, that's one thing that is well known with the Scarlet Witch that she likes to I don't want to say fly off the handle, but she's very unpredictable in her actions. Yeah, she thinks she acts first and thinks later. Yeah. So with that being said, this kind of fits in that in that wheelhouse that, OK, she is recreating her own universe because she doesn't want to accept what has happened. Right. That this is how she is grieving and she doesn't really have full set of awareness of what she's doing with her powers. Well, and I think she's just, it's just been a case because you think back to when she was first introduced, you know, back in age of Ultron where Mm -hmm. her entire life has just been one series after another of, you know, hardship and tragedy, you know, her parents dying in that missile attack or whatever it was where the Tony Stark or Stark industries was on the missile. You know, to the events of Age of Ultron, which led into the events of Civil War, which led into the events of Inf- uh, Infinity War, which led into Endgame. You're like, she, the the girl has had no time to just sit, breathe, and relax. And, right. And, and, and just kind of live. You know, it's been one thing after another. So this is just her going, listen, I have some semblance of happiness. Give me five minutes here. Yeah, this is going to be something where you, we find out where her head's at. Now, if you know anything about her character in the comic... 
it can go a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Then I know a lot of people are saying, okay, is this going to be Marvel's version of House of M? I don't no. I, I can't buy into that. No, if you don't know what we're talking about with House of M. No, more mutants. Yeah, this is where the Scarlet Witch has a breakdown of epic proportions. Yeah, epic in all capitals. Where she really rewrites reality. Like she really pushes her powers to a limit. And this goes to where Magneto takes over and it's a fantastic story where the mutants really uh, have asserted themselves to be the dominant species in right. Marvel. And it, it's, like I say, it's it's fantastic. We'll say with three words, she wipes out all mutants from existence. Yeah, right at the end of it, too. I mean, it's, well, I guess we just spoiled it for you. It's been out long enough, you should know. Yes, you, you definitely should pick it up. I mean, it, like I say, it's just the House of M is one of those classic stories that can really define what the Scarlet Witch is all about. Mm-hmm. That she has been a very polarizing character throughout the history of comics. Like, right. let's, let's not forget this. And obviously, with her connection to Magneto, yep. and now that the X-Men rights are to the MCU, what is going to happen there? I'm not saying we're going to find out Magneto is in no, the show. I'm going to no. already kill that rumor going no, on. No, I mean, and, and we do know from an interview Kevin Feige did that they've had discussions, they being the folks over Marvel uh, in the movie portion, have had discussions of when to introduce and how they're going to introduce mutants. And they've got an idea. It's just a matter of they've got to get around to doing it. Right. Right. Excuse me. So it's going to happen sooner than later. It's right. not going to happen in this show. No, it's not going to happen in this show because this, <laughs> this show works very much in the, in the same vein of with like the Daredevil stuff where like mm-hmm. they didn't have the rights to it. They couldn't touch the damn thing, you know, without issues. So depending on when they wrote this, I doubt that they worked the mutants in, in any way, shape or form. Right. I think if anything, you're going to deal with other characters in the MCU first and where they're going to set up building towards Kang the Conqueror. Right. Like I know we're going to see Kang in Ant-Man uh, Quantumania. Right. That's already been established. That's yep. already been leaked. That's yep. already has enough fire to it. For this show, we do know Agatha Harkness is going to be the main villain. Mm-hmm. Like that's going to be who it is. Agnes, I, sh- I should say rather. But we do know that that's where her she's going to be the major antagonist. Now, is there going to be some other factors going on? Sure. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I've heard. I mean, there's been a lot of rumors about the high evolutionary might be connected with this. I'm not saying that's all the realm of thought. Could be as well. I don't know if Marvel would go that tilt off the gate, but I think what they're going to just try to explain is, okay, how is the Scarlet Witch dealing with Endgame? And like when they say Wanda Vision, I know it's a play on words because the Vision is there, right? But you have to think that's Wanda's vision of the world now, right? And I mean, you know, things are going to get crazy enough because well, Swords involved, but also uh, listed on the IMDb page is one Cat Dennings, aka Darcy Lewis, which yeah. they're not bringing her in just for you know like a cute face and a cameo, like oh hey, remember her from the you know couple of Thor movies, like. Given what her character has been involved with, you know shit's going to get weird. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And with the Scarlet Witch, it, it's going to. I mean, going back to their whole relationship. I mean, when they had their first limited series out way back out in the 80s. Yeah. It was weird to see, okay, they're a married couple and how they're dealing with life away yeah. from the Avengers. Because, I mean, they both were Avengers at one point. Right. And then how they go on to deal with them having a family. And I know that's going to be playing a factor down the road because this is where it's also going to kick kick off what is going on with Young Avengers. Which is happening at which, some point. Oh, it is. I mean, there's too many Easter eggs throughout the MCU. That it's if a few years down the road, though. Oh, it's way down the road. But time travel, things get weird in yeah. a hurry. There hasn't been an official announcement for what Young Avengers right, is going to be. Right. But if you look at all the characters that have been announced throughout all the Disney Plus shows that we know thus far, yep. we do know Kate Bishop's going to be involved in the Hawkeye show. Yep. We do know that the Patriot is going to be involved in Falcon and, and Captain America or uh, Captain Winter Soldier. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Ant Man's uh, daughter is old enough. Yep. Structure. And there's going to be more that are going to be getting named as the phases are going on. I think that the fact that we're getting this much leaked out, you really have to understand the characters and the history involved. And obviously, the Scarlet Witch's children are heavily connected right. to that. I was saying, it's not even leaked out. It's like, and it's not even like a breadcrumb trail. You know, like Marvel likes to do that sometimes. Where like, they'll, they'll breadcrumb trail stuff throughout the movies. And, oh, hey, this is how it all connects. This is like a boulder sized breadcrumb. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense, too, because obviously we're talking the next phase of the Avengers. Young Avengers does have its niche in the Marvel history. Sure. For when that book came out. And it's a great read, too, if you haven't picked it up. And to see how it's kind of unfolded throughout the years, I mean, they've had a couple different runs. Uh, I know at one point Loki was on the team. Hey, uh, If memory serves me right, it's been a while since I've read it, but it, there was a whole story involving Kid Loki, and we'll just leave it at that. Right. Go to your local comic shops or go hit up Cheers to Comics or Wednesday Pull List. They'll fill you in about all that great stuff. 
there has been enough that they can tie into that that that'll be the next phase of Avengers yeah. per se. At some point, because I did read a thing that like because of everything announced, Marvel has got like from now to like twenty twenty six planned. Yeah. Or something bonkers like that. Well, you know Kevin Feige wants to make a big statement with yeah. this. And that's and he's going to do that. Yeah. He's not going in this with just a you know, a guess of like, okay, well I think I want to do this and let's see they what know, happens. They know what they're doing. He's so mapped out, it's absolutely frightening. Plans change, obviously. Cough cough in humans, cough cough. Uh, but no, yeah, he's, he's got a plan. He's got a plan and he's definitely going to make it happen. And this is going to where it kicks off because where WandaVision is going to end up, which I still don't know how it's going to do. Uh, listen, I know how it's going to end. Shit's going to kick off and go sideways so bad that it bleeds into Dr. Strange too. And Dr. Strange has to get involved. Well, that's what I think. We're going to see Benedict Cumberbatch's character reappear. I at wouldn't the end. be surprised if he, like, if like the last shot you see of, uh, WandaVision, the last episode is him showing up. Wouldn't surprise me. Oh, it wouldn't because we know that this show is going to lead right into the Doctor Strange sequel. That has been very, right. oh, yeah, very oh, well yeah. publicized. They, they have said that for a couple of years now. Yes. So this is going to dictate the pace of what goes on there. And then obviously what is happening in Spider-Man 3, mm-hmm. which we do know Doctor Strange is a part of, yep. is all going to tie back to this show. And then so, I think so, that, so it's bad enough that it's bleeding into two movies. It's Yeah. But it's going to be a monumental event to kick off, and oh, yeah. especially for fans that have been clamoring for new MCU material. Like, we did have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. last sure. year, but if people want to argue, well, it was the first calendar year, there wasn't official MCU. That was official. I'm sorry, that's official. Anybody wants to argue about that? The last listen. episode. Yeah, enough said. Watch the last episode. That, and I don't care there was different people running the shows compared to now. I know everything's one uh, umbrella under Feige for everything MCU, but mm-hmm. that show is part of it. I'm not saying it's out of the realm of thought that some of those characters are going to cross over into different shows. Sure. Wait and see, dot, dot, dot. But for everybody that's been waiting to see what the next phase is going to be after the biggest grossing film in all of film history, yep, we're amped up to see how this plays out. Yeah. And I just want to see something different. This looks to be something different. Well, it's going to be absolutely bonkers because I was reading an interview Kevin Feige did with Collider. Mm. Uh, and, the, and the person who did the interview got the first three episodes as screeners. And and we know from previous interviews and stuff that, you know, these episodes, and I don't know, I, we know it's nine episodes, but I don't know how they're doing it, whether it's going to be like that the episodes and in, in throughout this series, it, I've, as it moves forward in time, we'll be paying homage to kind of like the eras of television. So like the first couple episodes are going to be paying homage to I Love Lucy mm-hmm. and ending with homages to, you know, uh, The Office and that kind of like look at the camera documentary style. Uh, I You know, we do know from the interview that he did with Collider that, uh, he being Kevin Feige, that the first couple episodes where it's like 60s and, and I Love Lucy style, there are ads in those episodes, you yes. know, we we don't know what they are, but there are there are quote unquote ad breaks in the episode. Now it's not exactly advertising Coca Cola or Chevrolet like actual ads, but it's just something they made up for the for the episode. Now and also you might have to pay attention to those uh, commercial breaks. Well, I think those commercial breaks. I'm going to make an early prediction. You're either going to see certain characters in the mcu appear could be i'm even going to throw one out there that might get me in some trouble on the internet Uh oh nova Mm. i'm not doubting when they get to the 70s that we see a richard Ryder shoot across the sky or something like that there's one guy on the internet i know who'd be happy if that happens oh yeah there's quite a few he's been one of those that has been hinted enough sure throughout the mcu sure and i i would not doubt that that happens in there that because He's been heavily rumored to be like the next big phase coming in. Sure. I would also not doubt that we see flashes to this reality as in our present time. And you see that maybe Monica Rambeau is in one of those commercials before she turns, becomes Photon or Captain Marvel. Like her history in Marvel Comics, she's had a bunch of different names. She's a very right. powerful hero. Right. So I would don't doubt that you see like that live reaction just get played out through the eyes of the 60s. I think that that's where you're going to see how this show really stands out visually. Could we get a, a cameo from Evan Peters, a.k.a. Quicksilver from the Fox movies? Oh, I think he's going to be. That'd honest. be awesome. I think they've been very close to the chest about who they're going to have be involved in the show. Well, I, I think the the actor, and I'm blanking on it, I'm not going to look it up, but the guy who played him for Age of Ultron, I think I can see him coming back. Oh, I, um, Kick-Ass. I, 
yeah, I, th- I can see him coming back, but it would be f- it'd be fun in like a nice little tip of the hat homage, uh, even if it's just for like an ad, you know, one of those commercial breaks uh, in the episode where he's just there. It, that'd be that'd be a fun like fun little Easter egg for the fans. Yeah, it definitely would be. I mean, to know the history of Monica, or I mean, I'm sorry, Wanda, you're definitely going to see her family play out. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Thank you. And and the other reason I think he's going to show up is if you watch the two episodes that uh, Marvel put out on Disney Plus for their Legends TV mm-hmm. series, which I highly recommend, uh, especially if you're looking to get somebody into the show that isn't the biggest MCU fan, and, and they're like, ah, I don't really know if I can watch this. I haven't seen all the movies. Watch those two episodes. They're seven minutes apiece. One on Wanda, one on Vision. It gets you caught up on basically the need-to-know basis on what you need to know. Uh, Quicksilver featured very heavily in the Wanda episode. Oh, yeah. I could fully... So, given that she brought Vision back to life, I can totally see her at some point going, you know what, why don't I bring back my brother? Well, you got to remember her history. She's always been tied with her brother throughout the Avengers run when Captain America brought those two and Hawkeye on the team. Right. And they were villains at the time. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And to see how they've grown throughout the comics... Not to say what they've done in the movies, because that's a whole different ball of wax. Right. Far. But we know that Scarlet Witch has taken a very different turn from what Quicksilver has done. Sure. And to see that, I mean, they're still connected, and then whatever you want to define with Magneto. Right. And I'm sure that that's going to get retconned, too, in that, the MCU that, that now. Might, that might come down the line. Oh, I think so. I think, I wouldn't doubt you hear his name mentioned. Right, because we, we do not know who the parents are. We do, well, and, and you can even go further. It's like, oh, that, that was just adopted parents. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they have a way to retcon out yeah. of that. They for... they retcon uh, Peter Parker into the MCU. Yeah. Oh, oh, the little kid that was wearing the Iron Man helmet in Iron Man Two. Yeah, that was Peter Parker. Yeah, exactly. There's ways to get they this can, done. They can do it. So I'm not saying we're going to hear a casting announcement, no. but I would I wouldn't doubt that we hear something not mutant related, but enough nah, to connect the dots. Nah, I, don't, I don't know. Just because with the with the whole they didn't have the whenever they wrote it and if they had the rights or not it, it, it very hard to figure right no I, that's why i said i don't think we're going to hear it but i think oh, they're okay. i think you're going to allude to it enough so then when they're gonna, yeah they could dance around it enough and not say the word but like hey wink wink nudge nudge yeah that's what i mean you're going to dance around it enough because eternals is when they're going to drop this oh, yeah. i'm sorry you're not going to tell me otherwise because they're going to deal with evolution and blah 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 and to every they're going to try putting so much into that movie to make it sellable that, yeah, right. I I don't doubt that that's where you first see a mutant up here. Like, whoever it's going to be. Probably it's going to be the Phoenix Force. I know no, reasons. No, no. They, they'll do something weird. Christ like, almighty, It'll no. be something weird like that. It, it'll be, if they have a mutant appear in that movie, it'll be somebody not one of the major ones. So not Xavier, Magneto, Wolverine. You know, I'd even go so far as Cyclops, Gene, you know, the main line X-Men. But it'll be somebody that enough people go, oh, I know that name. See, I'm just trying to think back to now they've done the Avengers BC. Oh, yeah. And try to tie it in. I'm yeah. like, oh, they probably have the Phoenix Force there just to yeah. say they did. I I hope I'm wrong. I'm, I'm not saying you yeah. can hear the tone of my voice. I'm not exactly screaming Boba Fett style about this. I'm so to quote the Grinch song. They're not going to touch that with a 39 and a half foot pole. I hope not. I hope they leave the, the Phoenix Force away. Leave it dead. Forever. That being said, though, the show is coming out this Friday. So, Pad... Anything you're expecting to see? Final thoughts on this? What's, what's your temp in the room about I'm, this show? I'm really excited for this just because it's going to be so unlike anything we've seen from Marvel, where it's a story, it's going to have a beginning, middle, and end. It's you know everything you learned in, in in your literature classes about rising action, you know falling action, all that stuff. It's going to have all of that, but it's going to be done in such a way that it's like kind of cut and paste, where it's like, okay, self-contained episodes. So it's not going to be like your traditional beginning, middle, and end. It's going to be very interesting to see, and I can't wait to see where they go with like the homages to the television that we grew up watching over the years. I think this show has a lot of pressure on it. Yeah. And I think yeah. that they're going to deliver something good. I really have a very positive feeling about this, because let us not forget... Falcon and Winter Soldier was supposed to come out before this. This is true. And they had to do a little juggling around because so of COVID. Had, they had to stop filming, yeah. Right. So WandaVision is the first one out the gate of what the next phase of the MCU is. And we have sure. to remember this. Sure. That now there's going to be a whole new slate of Avengers they're going to be building up towards. Right. Which uh, Kevin Feige did say there will be another Avengers movie at some point, just not right now. Right. They're going to do the slow build up because they're going to do the transition of the team. Sure. For whatever the final roster is going to be, because let's face it, Robert Downey Jr. is not coming back as Tony Stark. Maybe someday. Not and, right. Not right. Right. Now. As, as of right now, he's out. Chris Evans is not going to be Captain America right as now. of right now. As of right now, 
We do know Chris Hemsworth is still in the MCU. Yep. To what extent? To be determined. Might be might turn it into like a Robert Downey Jr. type of thing. Like, ah, hey, you need me when you need me, and otherwise I'm not really doing my movies anymore. Right, because there's a lot of behind the scenes that we don't know. Yeah. But they've been trying to establish the next generation of Avengers, and if you know anything about the Avengers, they have a rotating lineup to begin with. This is true. So WandaVision is going to be the kickoff for what this new Brave phase is going to be for the MCU. Which, which, I mean, I get it's not what they wanted to lead off with. You lead off with, and we've said it when we were talking about the trailer that dropped for uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. That Like, oh, this looks like an actual movie. Lead off with something that people are at least familiar with in, in, in terms of tone and look. And then you get real weird with it. But circumstances, what they are, they're rolling with it. But I think the fan base is excited to have something new. Oh, Christ. You could have given a nine-episode show of Howard the Duck and fans would have been excited at this point. I knew you were going to say that. Like, like it just was, again, circumstances what they are, and it's been such a dry spell with stuff directly, you know, in with characters from the films that legitimately you could have a show with Howard the Duck for nine episodes and fans would be like, give it to me. And the fans are definitely clamoring for the new material. We talk about this all the time on Twitter, at OD Parlay. Yeah. We have engaging conversations with everybody about this. And honestly, nobody has been like, oh, it's Wanda and, and Vision. Everybody is excited. Yeah. Because now, whatever the phase is going to be with the Avengers franchise, we're now going forward. Mm -hmm. The honeymoon phase in Endgame is done. Love it or hate it, it's now done. The minute Friday happens, we are now on the next phase. So where are we going to go? We're going on a trip. It's going to get weird. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different. I am super excited about this because you know my love affair with Marvel. Right. I like it when they do different things. I like it when they follow the comics. I hate it when they go cookie cutter. Sure. This is not like anything we've seen thus far from what the trailer has done. They're paying enough homage to the comics that I think that this is going to be a bona fide hit. I think the fact that you now have Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany coming back to their roles and they're paying homage to their character's history. As we've seen in one episode, it's a Halloween costume. Right. And you see the classic Vision and Scarlet Witch costumes. Mm -hmm. I think that you're going to be having those elements throughout their history and their complicated relationship come to light. I think you're going to see the true power of the Scarlet Witch show up yeah, and huh? know that she might be more villain than hero. Ooh. And I think they're going to tease that she is so powerful. She has created her own reality. Yep. And I think that knowing this, she could turn out to be possibly the next big bad in the MCU. If they want to spin it that way, I don't think they're going to, Not yet. but I think what they're going to say is she's going to be the catalyst for what's to come. She's going to mess up a whole lot of stuff. Mm hmm. And it's going to be opening Pandora's box that she might be responsible for bringing Kang the Conqueror to the MCU. She might be responsible for causing the time rifts that are allowing other franchises, (coughs) X-Men, Fantastic Four, (coughs) Netflix Universe. Should get that checked out. To come there. I know it's, it's a hacking cough. I'm trying to deal with it. She's going to be the reason for a lot of retconning and shortcutting to get characters over. Yeah. Now, is it going to be a bad thing? No, I don't think so. I hope not. I hope not either, because I think Marvel is smart enough to know to take a show like this is going to be a gamble. I think it's a smart gamble, though. Yeah. Because the characters are already very popular from their little time with the Avengers franchise. The fact that they got over with that franchise and with the mainstream public is a good sign. I think the ratings when they come in for this is going to be a telling sign for Disney Plus that they're taking the step in the right direction. Obviously, we know with the Disney Plus, they've had a bona fide hit in The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. But now this is Marvel's first real step up to bat and saying, okay, can you match us? And I think they're going to. I really, truly don't know what to expect, per se, from stories. We've given you a lot to go to the comic shops to go pick up in the next couple of days. And I will say, I've always said they're going to borrow from the Vision story from Tom King. Elements they're going to take a lot of. They're also going to take from the first Vision and Scarlet Witch run. Mm -hmm. House of M is the biggest question mark, but I think they're saying Wanda's going to create own reality. I think that's going to tie into that. So I think they're going to borrow a little bit of House of M, but it's not going to be the real House of M. That everybody needs to pump their brakes on. 
In fact, I'll give you another storyline I think they're going to borrow from, and that's Avengers Disassemble. Hmm. And I know that that was the start of Michael Brian Michael Bendis' run with the Avengers franchise. And to see where he went with it and just completely 180'd it, it's not out of the realm of thought to say that this is going to be the kickoff for how they're going to go with everything else moving forward. This show has a lot riding on it. It has to deliver. I think it's going to. It's going to be weird, but we're going to be here talking about it each week. Mm -hmm. So definitely stay tuned for that. So that being said, this would be where I'd say the music that you heard on this episode of the ODPH is that of Shout at the Robots. Now, granted, there was no music this week, but there will be next week. You should still head on over to OchoDuroPolyHour.com. You hit up the music section. You can go hear all the fantastic music that is Shout at the Robots, because they are fantastic people. You can also check out Second Suitor. You can also check out Tom Jolu. You can also check out Floodlands. And you can also check out Brian Wolf of Fair City Fire, who is doing his Patreon Beatles concert tonight. Ooh. So that should be definitely fun to check out. All of that is at OchoDuroParleyHour.com, along with our Friends of the Show section under the directory. You can find out who you talk to, because they're great people. You can also find organizational links supporting Black Lives Matter. And you can also check out the amazing pod groups that we're in via their Podchaser page. Now, Pad, you know I have a saying about this, right? Uh, you do. And that is, if you're not on Podchaser and you claim you're in a pod group, you're not in a pod group. So if you're like, well, I want to know about pod groups, you click on over there. You can check out all the great people that are in Pod Nation. The Legion and Independent Podcasts, Alternate Reality Radio, The Apocalypse, Hashtag 607 Podcast, and our friends over at 8122 Productions. So obviously, shout out to Rich, Ron, Mike C, and Hashtag Big Natty Cool. Still on Twitter, Pat. Oh, boy. And he is gearing up for a live stream with Coach Duffy. Coming in just a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. That's going to be happening. So if you want to find out, well, why are you hyping up Big, Big Natty Cool all that much? Simple. Big hey. Natty Cool's meeting uh, Coach Duffy's wife. Yes. This has been hyped up more than uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. Because there's going to be a lot of smack getting talked that night. Because uh, Diesel does not like Conor McGregor. And he's very open about this. And we all know where Coach Duffy stands if you listen to the sports show. And it's going to be some fireworks during that live stream. So if you really want to find out what Diesel does with a live microphone. One dollar gets you in the door. Three dollars gets you a comfy seat at the table. Anything else I don't want to know about. Patreon.com slash 8122productions. Also, check out our Tee Public store where we have a sale going on, I believe, this week. So if you want to get some ODPH swag, that's the place to stop on by and help support the show. All of that and so much more at OchadorPolyHour.com. That's all I got for this episode. So for the one and only Pat J. Thank you, thank you. I'm your host, Ken M. Thank you, as always, for listening to the ODPH podcast, better known as the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. See you next time.